Hello everyone, I'm Sahma Abdi from Karachi, Pakistan. I'll present about digital storytelling as a language learning tool. Digital storytelling is actually a buzzword of 21st century skills and Porter describes it as a combination of ancient art of oral storytelling with technical tools. Uh, so digital story actually facilitate teachers in incorporating technology into ELT curriculum. The basic purpose of digital story is uh, language learning. It, it provides a very friendly, collaborative, interactive atmosphere to the learners to acquire the foreign language. Um, it enhances all four basic language skills, listening, speaking, reading, and writing, and also drills uh, grammar and pronunciation. Uh, it also allows learners to express their ideas uh, creatively by enriching their uh, vocabulary with uh, vivid words. Besides that, uh, it can be used to, by the learners to voice their personal stories or even others' story as well for inspiration and as a source of motivation and even entertainment for others and for themselves as well. It can be used as a reflective tool as well in which the students reflect on their life and then they can unfold the lesson that they have learned in life and they can share these uh, significant lessons with others. If we look at uh, the aspect of community building, then it would uh, help the learners in highlighting the social issues and creating awareness about it. For, for example, they can present uh, the, the problem along with the solutions and they can even ask for call of action for those uh, problems. Let's see what are the elements of a digital story. The very first thing uh, is the overall purpose. Once it is selected, uh, then uh, the learners can extract the themes for development of digital story. For example, if uh, the oral purpose uh, is uh, awareness campaign, then the student can find out what uh, social issues can be projected here. For example, it could be uh, child labor, gender discrimination, girls education, etc. Once the theme is decided, then the next thing is POV. Students need to find out whether they want to narrate the story in first person pronoun or third person pronoun. Then comes the emotional content. Uh, here they can start off uh, by posing a question, uh, which is called dramatic question. It would definitely be a rhetorical question, but uh, the theme that they have, the aim that they have is to uh, ignite the thinking process of uh, the viewers. So they start thinking while watching the content. Then, the, in order to convince the audience uh, to take an action, there could be a rhetorical triangle added, uh, which is uh, comprised of pathos, ethos, and logos. Uh, so, uh, the audience can be persuaded by uh, igniting or by targeting their emotions, ethical values, and logical reasoning as well. Uh, then uh, it's quality language and as digital story here is used as a, a, a tool for language development. So this step is very necessary. Uh, it is uh, to be assured that the language and the vocabulary that is used is of a very good quality and here accuracy is the key. Then quality images. Images are actually conveying the message and they are one of the powerful Source, uh, sources for that. So that is why the images should be very clear. Uh, they should be meaningful and they shouldn't be blurred at all. For the clarity of voice, uh, a voice uh, narration can be added and it can be added where if uh, your target is also to um, focus on pronunciation uh, of the student. So at that time, um, uh, the learners need to find out that the uh, voice uh, consistency and pacing is very important. For example, uh, the voice punctuation, it should fit in uh, the storyline. And lastly, uh, the overall impact should be very powerful. And for that, uh, a very thought-provoking message uh, should be conveyed in the digital story. These are some of the areas um, um, of pathos, ethos, and logos, and there are examples also given that can help the learner understand each element of persuasion.
The digital storytelling process is of five steps. You start off with a topic, then research about it to extract appropriate material, and then use your prior knowledge uh, to develop a script and then edit it. And after this editing, the next step is to add multimedia. To elaborate this process, uh, uh, you may start off by forming groups of the students and it's better if the groups are small because it would be easy for you to assess the performance of all the students in a group. And then at that sta stage, it's also important that you assign uh, the roles to each of the learners so all of them uh, can participate equally and they have a clear idea what, uh, what exactly they have to do. After that, you can introduce a storyboard to the student and um, in a storyboard, the student would have to create a picture along with a text or narration for uh, each picture. For a, a digital story of two to three minutes, uh, around uh, eight to ten pictures are more than enough. And that is, uh, this is stage, the teacher can have the opportunity uh, to correct the errors, uh, language errors of the students. Um, uh, what you can do at that time is uh, you can uh, go for any type of error, any technique for error correction. It could be explicit correction in which you there and then tell what's wrong with it and correct it uh, explicitly, clearly. Uh, or you can recast the error by providing the correct version of uh, the error that is produced by the student. Another way uh, to correct a student is metalinguistic feedback in which you just ask them to correct by posing a question like, uh, do you say he like? And then the student would think whether it is he like or he like. Uh, or even it could be a clarification request in which you uh, just tell the student that, I don't understand that. Um, sorry, what did he say? Can you repeat it? So at that time, a student would be cautious that there is some error and I need to check what it is and I need to correct it. Or it, uh, the other way or the, uh, of error correction is delayed correction in which you just find out what are the errors that are made or produced by a different group. So you just jot them down and afterward uh, plan a class in which you highlight these errors as common errors and then rectify that with the help of the students. It is important to know that the errors uh, for which there is a fear of fossilization should not be delay delayed and uh, for that there and then correction should be done. Then the next st stage is uh, taking pictures and here students can uh, dress up according to their characters. Uh, they can do a little makeup or add on some props. So a, a good effect is actually produced. A vivid image can be created. And after taking the pictures, the, the students can use PowerPoint for this purpose uh, and incorporate the pictures with text or narration. It's up to them. So again, if you're uh, one of the assessment criteria is to check the pronunciation of the students to correct it, uh, provide the feedback, then it's necessary that you ask the students to add narration rather than the text. And to have a, an overall impact of uh, the whole uh, digital story, you can add some soundtracks, but make sure that there is no copyright issue. And the students also need to learn about these, uh, these things. And then you can publish it on any social uh, platform. And, uh, and the students would really like to see it and to share it with their friends. In PowerPoint presentation, the student need to know that uh, in order to create a video, they need to export it. And at that stage, there are two steps uh, to be uh, be to be careful about. One, the quality of uh, the video, whether you want a high definition display or uh, lower than that or a medium one, or the narration uh, can be added at this step and timing can also be adjusted. So far, I have been emphasizing on the use of uh, PowerPoint presentation for creating digital story. Actually, I find it uh, quite friendly and easy to do, simple way to create stories. And as uh, you can easily work offline uh, to create a story on a PowerPoint presentation, that is why I ask my students to go for it. But there are many other application tools available online, just like SlideShare, uh, Sock Puppet, Storybird, Superburst. 
or puppet pals uh, they can be used because uh, they provide many props and animations uh, for creating a very uh, vibrant and vivid uh, story but it depends upon the resources uh, you have if you have a good internet connection if you have uh, multiple pc or a tab um, or a laptop then definitely you can go for a variety of tools uh, to be used uh, each time when the students are creating a digital story that would definitely evoke and sustain their interest level throughout. Digital story in, uh, undoubtedly is one of the finest tool for language learning and one of the uh, friendliest tools to learn language. And you'll see that the students uh, not only extrovert but introvert uh, would take initiative and interest in developing these stories. They would be thoroughly involved in the process and uh, they would be questioning one another. Their interview skills would be improved uh, uh, along with the communication skills. They will probe for uh, the solution of the problems uh, and they would be more reflective. Uh, they would unfold uh, the lesson learned and uh, they would learn from the mistakes. Apart from that, they would be more organized and once they are going to publish these stories online, then they would have a sense of ownership and uh, their uh, confidence level and morale will be boosted. Next, we have are the challenges that you might have when you are going to create a digital story along with your students. The very first thing is digital literacy. Definitely all the students might not be aware of the tools that we have been talking about so or even teachers too. So uh, the teachers can be trained first and uh, there could be a workshop conducted in this regard and then these teachers can help the students uh, in working with the, the tools for uh, digital storytelling. Uh, the next problem is the limitation of resources. Uh, this story can be created with minimum resources like for example if you have a single uh, PC or a single laptop uh, and um, even uh, no internet connection available, then even uh, your students can uh, use mobile phones just to take the pictures and then they can create their uh, stories using a single uh, personal computer or laptop. The next thing is role of individuals in a collaborative setting. Whenever you uh, come up uh, with any activity with group work, it's quite obvious that the students who are dominant, they take the lead and the students who are hesitant, uh, they couldn't perform to the fullest. So for that, it's necessary that for each step, uh, you assign roles to the students. Uh, so they are very clear about uh, the function they have uh, to perform in a group and they would be more focused and everybody would be developing in the same pace. So you can assign one or two roles. Uh, they could be, students could be facilitator, presenter, recorder, questioner, editor, or there are a number of other roles as well. Next, uh, uh, when we were talking about themes, at that time, teacher needs to be very vigilant that uh, the, which, uh, what is what uh, topic or what theme the students about to explore. Uh, explore. Their culture values uh, needs to be adhered to because uh, when you are publishing such a stories online at that time, if they are not aligned with cultural value, there could be backlash and the student would be demotivated and would not um, uh, like to have such assignments uh, in, uh, afterwards. So that's very important that there is a check and balance and the students need to know what they have to explore, what um, they shouldn't. And the last thing is the assessment of a digital story. Uh, it's better if you create rubrics or a performance indicator in this regard. So uh, you can share these rubrics or performance, indicator, performance indicators beforehand to the, with the students so that they have a clear idea on uh, which criteria they would be marked uh, or they would be assessed. Uh, and um, you can create it according to your own choice, according to your own objectives, for example, um, if uh, it's more about pronunciation, then uh, you can uh, keep it as one of the uh, target objective. Uh, you can even work on voice consistency or voice pacing um, uh, or the use of images uh, or if you are looking for creativity and language definitely would be uh, one of the criteria and in which you are going to 
to uh, assess it like uh, grammar punctuation all these things can be assessed it's de depending upon what is your objective for it That's all about digital stories. Uh, the, you can enjoy the next uh, video. Uh, this uh, was actually created by a student on uh, one of the social themes that was the rights of women. And uh, they created uh, the video on the theme Orange the World and uh, posted it on United Nations site so that uh, the viewers can get the message. Yeah, the language, language is improved in the same time. Thank you so much, everyone.